Can you all see my presentation? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll get cracking. Right. Good morning, everybody. Um, importance of accessibility inclusion. This was really. It shouldn't be a choice at all. So, a quick question for everybody. Would any of us want to actually exclude or discriminate against any one of our friends, family, co-workers or our customers? No, I don't think we would, would we? Well, okay. Maybe the bank manager every now and then. And apologise if anyone knows any nice bank managers out there. But in reality, do you realise that some of you are already discriminating? Right here, right now. You know, we don't have live subtitles. You know, faces and lips aren't exactly clear. Nobody's using headphones with microphone uh, with the microphones built in. And well, I put poor interconnection in over the last few weeks. We've had some poor connections, but this morning it looks like we're okay. So what's it actually feel like? It's like we've organised a really good meeting, but then just didn't bother bringing enough chairs. Would have been nice to sit down. So anyway, what can we do? So here's some facts for you. You think it's about me. It's all about these disabled, disabled people. 13 million of us, you know, with physical, sensory or learning or whatever disabilities. But the interesting facts are, is that 80% of disabilities are actually invisible. So you, know, you, know, you don't know these. You, know, you don't know when, they are, uh, when somebody's got a disability. The other interesting fact is that 20% of your typical customer base, again, will have a disability. And more importantly, 75% of these have turned away because businesses are not accessible. Whether that be, you know, physically not being able to get into, into a building or whatever, or digitally. So quite interest, quite some big numbers there. But actually in truth, it's not really about me and, and it's not about the disabled sector. It's really actually about our friends, family, co-workers and customers. And the reason why I say that is because when you actually look at the figures of, you know, somewhere in the region of 13 million people, it actually equates to somewhere like one in six people. So we all know somebody with a disability. So it is, it's about our friends, family and, and co-workers, etc. So what can we do? Now, this may a little bit sound a little bit strange coming from somebody like me, but I have always backed on. We do not, let's not consider the needs of the few. But instead, what we should be doing is let's consider the needs of everyone we communicate. Let's make that real a difference. Let's make a real difference with accessible and inclusive communication for all. So everybody has a good and better chance of understanding. So let's just think about this. So if you think of your own business and, 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 uh, and your own customers as well, do they know anything about taxable, accessible websites and the requirements? Do they know about the fact that, you know, documentation and literature needs to be available in large print or braille and wrote in plain, simple English? Do you happen to know the legisl legislation and requirements of it? And do we all manage and use these video conferencing in the best way possible to make them accessible? What's the driver? It's obviously legislation. There's plenty of them out there. I won't go into them all. But the one that's really what uh, generally gets forgotten about is this. It's the Equality Act. It's that big piece of um, legislation putting together lots and lots of different um, smaller bits of legislation. And it's all about protecting everybody in the, you know, in the UK as it were, and make sure nobody's discriminated against. So, if you could go back to that original question I asked is about, you know, website compliance and everything. If any of those answers to you are, are no, then you are at risk. You're at risk of non-compliance. Open to fines. You're open to things like websites being taken down immediately. You then need to put some labour and resource into, into it very quickly to resolve any issues. And then, of course, with people turning away, you're going to lose up. You've, you've lost revenue with those customers. So what is really, what's the big picture? It is about compliance. Now, it is about reducing risk, employee retention, you know, increased opportunities and, and accessing new talents. 
I'd love to go into that into a lot more detail, but I, we don't really have the time for that today. But basically, if you start looking at uh, the compliance and uh, really looking at the Equality Act, there's a lot of things and a lot of added value you can bring to your business. Then there's, this is a bit of a sobering thought and what I always come across. It says, a surprisingly large number of businesses are just not compliant. So I'd ask you, is yours? It shouldn't really be a choice. So that's me, David Walter, Penine Consultant. I can help you on accessibility and inclusion, uh, using video platforms like this, get the best practices, uh, your company communications, and of course, compliance with your call tab. Thank you. Any questions, most welcome. Thank you. I've got a question for me, Bill. Yeah. Um, that software you've got for the subtitles, is that easily accessible for us to, 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 to have, or is that specialism software for, for you, David? Yeah, there's, well, it's basically about um, choosing the right platform. Well, it's actually, you, you start before that, you think about what your audience, and then think about what their needs are, whether they're disabled or not. You know, so it, you know, it's like any great meeting, you make sure you prepare it well. Um, then when it comes to things like, you know, these video platforms, Providing subtitles is a real benefit, simply because there's a lot of people who are, let's say, normal hearing, actually subconsciously rely on lip reading to, for an extra level of, of understanding. It's amazing. You'll, you'll, you know, if you, if you ask around and actually think, you know, find out, there's a lot of people who rely on lip reading. So it's great to be able to see your voice, to see your lips rather. And then from the subtitles, that just adds an extra level. So what I'm using is I'm using um, a software platform called Otter AI, which basically listens and converts everything. But you'll also see that, oh, I think you'll also see that on my PowerPoint presentation, you should also be getting subtitles. Is that right? Are you saying subtitles? Yeah. Yep. So again, there's another different way around it. Okay. You'll see that the subtitles aren't perfect, but they're not bad. So yeah, no, I use different bits of our software, yes. Brilliant, thank you, David. David, can you just say the name of that software again, please? Yes, it's Otter, Otter AI, O-T-T-E-R, AI for Artificial Intelligence. And then David, that, that sits regardless of PowerPoint, it's two different ones that, that mesh across each other. There we go. There's a bit of a PowerPoint. Two different ones that mesh across each other. Yes. The, yeah. The, to be honest with you, PowerPoint has only just really introduced the subtitles, and and it's actually what they're using for things like their uh, Microsoft Teams. It's not the best of software for subtitles, but you'll find if you use Otter AI, Otter AI is basically one of the. You know, it's very very accurate. Otter AI, not perfect, but it is it is good. Sure. Uh, sorry, David, just to clarify then, these subtitles that we're seeing today, are they through PowerPoint itself or through Otter AI? No, these are through PowerPoint. Right. Through PowerPoint. Just simply because it's, um, if, it, if I wanted to, I could actually share my screen with Otter AI. Well, then it's getting complicated because I've actually got, I'm running on two screens. And I've got different windows open. But it is something that you can actually share. You can actually have, let's say, Zoom parts up on, let's say, your left-hand side of your screen and Otter AI parts up on the other side. And then people would be able to see uh, the subtitles from Otter. The downside is that you'd already be sharing your screen. So it takes away some functionality. So by far the best way of doing it is actually choose a platform which actually has live subtitles built in. And at the moment, the only one we're doing that, uh, Google Meet, which is not bad, but it's not very good from a, um, a business conference point of view. Oh, the other one is MS Teams uh, with a 365 uh, business account. They are uh, the, the best sort of compromise of everything. Okay, do you want to close the screen now and then? Uh... Yeah.
Phil, can I just share something? I'm just playing around with PowerPoint and never even seen the subtitle settings there. So that's very useful, David. Thank you for sharing that. Ah, no problem at all. No problem at all. 